In this video, we're going to explore the meaning of the term leverage and what it means for us as traders or investors, the good points and of course the bad points as well. Hello, welcome back to this latest video with me, David Jones and Trading212. This is part of our series of um, bursting through the jargon in financial markets uh, and I thought a good one to do this time around is this idea of leverage. Now, if we're trading foreign exchange, uh, contracts for difference, uh, individual equities, we can often use leverage, but I think it's misunderstood how it works, what the risks are, what the potential rewards are. It is something that we actually do use in our everyday life. So let's just start off right with the basics. You know, what is this idea of leverage and how do we actually use it in everyday products, not just financial markets? So let's look at some everyday uses uh, for leverage, where it's pretty common. The obvious one is uh, houses. So there aren't many of us who'll go out and pay cash uh, when we're buying a house. Uh, so there is an element of leverage involved. You know, if we're buying somewhere for, let's say, £200,000, our deposit might be uh, 20000 but we end up borrowing 180000 So there's one example of leverage in everyday life. Another major purchase, this, normally the second biggest one after a house, is a car. And again, there aren't many people who'll go out and spend £30,000 cash on a brand new BMW. So they'll go out, they'll put a deposit down, uh, and they'll borrow the rest. So again, they're leveraging uh, to get an asset, in this case, what's going to be probably a depreciating asset, but they're borrowing the money. Let's bring it a bit closer to home, back to the investment world. Let's say you were convinced a certain share was going to go up in price um, and you wanted to have as much exposure as possible to that share. You might decide that actually over the next year the share is going to go up 20%. You decide to borrow £10,000 to invest in the share. It costs you 5% a year but you're confident that you think you can um, beat the cost of the financing in this example by the growth in the share price. Um, in reality it's much easier than going out and get a, getting a loan but we'll talk a bit more about that when it comes to margin trading. But there's another example of leverage in the investment world. So the really basic principle of leverage, using a small sum of money and effectively borrowing more money, so magnifying the size of the money you've got to get a bigger exposure to uh, whether it's a car, a house, or, or an individual share, or a foreign exchange pair. Um, clearly, there are risks and rewards with this when it comes to investing or trading. So let's just uh, Let's spell those out before we go any further. As with all decisions, there are good points and bad points, and there are clearly pros and cons when it comes to using leverage in investing or trading. Let's look at the plus point uh, first of all. Let's go back to the example where we borrow our mythical £10,000 uh, at 5% a year to gain exposure to a share. The plus point is, if the share price, let's say we're right, and the share price goes up um, 20%, over a year. So it goes, we've made 20% on our £10,000. We've made a profit of £2,000 in that example, and it's only costing us £500 in interest. So the, the clear benefit is we can get bigger exposure. So if we're correct, we make more money than if we weren't using leverage. If we'd only put in, let's say, £1,000 of our own savings, and it goes up 20%, we've only made £200. So leverage, when we're right, gives us more bang for our buck. But of course, there's no such thing as free money. It's never just a, you know, a one-way bet when it comes to investing in financial markets. Let's say the share had dropped. If it drops 20% over a year, we've borrowed. So our decision was wrong. We've borrowed that money, that £10,000. It's now only worth £8,000. We've lost 20%. On top of that, we're paying this 5% charge. Um, so for leverage, yes, the obvious plus point, it magnifies our profits. But of course, if we're magnifying our profits, then we are doing the same to our losses. So increased exposure means we're going to end up potentially facing bigger losses if our decision turns out to be wrong. And this is true for investing and trading when we're using leverage. In the next video, we're going to explore this idea of leverage when it comes to trading. We're going to look at how it works for margin trading and look at some real examples. But just to give you a flavor of what we're going to talk about, let's look at some typical leverage multipliers uh, for a couple of popular markets. And again, the pros and the cons. Let's look at, uh, at a couple of typical examples when it comes to trading. The world of FX 
has always offered um, large amounts of leverage due to the fact we don't see, in percentage terms, that big a movement during the day. So in FX, it's not unusual to get 100 times leverage, maybe even more. You know, so what that means is, let's, let's say we've got 100 times leverage. If we did a trade uh, on pound US dollar, and we had our total exposure was $10,000, in this example, we'd only need to deposit or tie up 1% uh, of that. So we'd have a position where we've got a 10,000 exposure, but we've only got $100 uh, initial deposit. That's uh, using leverage. In the stock market, um, the, the leverage normally isn't as uh, big as that. But if we look at one example, let's say uh, a US share. So on trading platforms, if we're uh, trading shares, contracts for difference, that sort of thing, we may get 20 times leverage. So if we did a trade in something like Tesla, and let's say we had a total of a $1,000 position, we'd only need to tie up uh, a 20th of that in this example, so 5%. So we might have a situation where we have only $50 uh, initial deposit tied up, but we've still got that exposure of $1,000 overall. So we're controlling a $1,000 position, but we've only initially tied up $50 on our account. There's a couple of examples here of how leverage works when it comes to trading. But don't forget, you know, it does cut, cut both ways. We have these exposures for a relatively small uh, initial deposit, um, but you know, it's going to magnify our profits, but also magnify our losses if the trade turns out to be wrong. So that's our introduction uh, to leverage. Use sensibly, it can be a very powerful tool for individual investors. It can help us increase our exposure uh, and potentially deliver more profits. But of course, hand in hand with that goes the risk of um, bigger losses if we weren't using leverage. We're going to explore this in more depth when we talk about margin trading and how we can uh, put steps in place to limit those losses. Um, but for this week, we'll start wrapping things up. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just leave us a message down below in the comments. We do read them all. If you like the video, uh, click on the thumbs up. And as this is part of a whole series of financial terms, if you're not subscribed, just click on the subscribe button there. And then there's the alarm bell notification down there. If you make sure that's been clicked, you'll get notified every time we upload a video. But for this week from me, David Jones and Trading212, uh, we'll leave it there. And I hope you have a good trading week.